And the second thing is, I was like, <laughs> Heather, um, do you know what I want on my topping? Um, Ten years of child support. How about that? <laughs> I, you know what I would. You, you know what my bitch. favorite kind of pizza is? Having a mom <laughs> who isn't, I think, dead. <laughs> Full movie. 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 Welcome back to the Gamcast, where each week we sample another selection from Christian cinema because self-flagellation is messy. Increases the laundry bills. Sitting to my immediate left is Heath Enright. Heath, welcome back. Thank you, thank you. And sitting 988 miles to my right is Eli Bosnick. Eli, glad you could make it. I'm in a chair. That's good to know. Good to know you're going to need to be in one for this movie. And joining us for the first time tonight is comedian, improv artist, and guest masochist Meg Griffiths. Meg, welcome to God Awful Movies. Thank you guys so much. I'm so excited to be here. So remind me, how did we talk you into this? Um, Eli's a magician, and I couldn't help but say yes. Yeah, hypnosis. I, I have her family locked in a basement somewhere <laughs> and she will see them again if she watches yeah. three more christian movies <laughs> also a million years ago i was a film major and so it's really fun to put on my analytical hat and i feel like put it towards the right. good of humanity this wow. is the type of movie you need a, a film <laughs> education right. to uh, exactly. analyze yeah absolutely <laughs> it's good that we have an expert like- <laughs> We'll find the two things they didn't do wrong at the end. You can save that for us. So our our movie for this week was a 2009 release by the name of No Greater Love. It's a story of forbidden love, scenery chewing, and musical montages that starts (laughs) boring and ends crazy. So I'm going to give everybody a shot at this one, but Meg, you're our guest, so I'm going to give you first crack. How bad was this movie? Um, The movie was so bad, I felt like, If movies have warnings about flashing lights and violence, this movie should have a warning at the beginning that it's a Christian movie. Um, And the fact that it takes place in Florida should basically tell you everything you need to know. (laughs) They really sneak the Christianity into this movie, too. They layer it in slow, and by the end, it's all Jesus. Yeah. Yeah, well, it starts out like this kind of like great, terrible Lifetime movie. Mm-hmm. Like if it was on television um, and I had wanted to watch something while I ate my lunch, it, yeah, I would watch this. But then it takes this sharp left turn at like literally the halfway point, And then it's the point at which every normal person would turn it off, except <laughs> people who have committed to watching it for a podcast or young Christians who can't leave Sunday school. <laughs> yeah. I love how you tried to shoehorn yourself into normalcy at the end of that, by the way. All right. So, so Heath, sum up the horror for us. How bad was this? Uh, all right. So, you know how Wild Wild West was a great movie? Yes, I do. Um, <laughs> this one was not. No. Uh, despite using that really helpful format device that Meg just mentioned, when you start a second horrible movie around the one hour mark, I think it still fell flat a little bit. You know, Eventually, I just listened to the audio and watched the video of Sophie's Choice, which helped. <laughs> like like Pink Floyd and uh, and uh, Wizard of Oz. I get it. Okay. Yeah, just like that. All right. And finally, With Eli, why should the audience that. not watch this film? Uh, because you have literally anything else to do. Literally <laughs> Anything. If there are bears outside your home, if you live in a rural area, fighting one is a better time. <laughs> just go out there and be like, come on, motherfucker, and just, just go for it, because who if not you? This movie, Meg, Meg already talked about this, this movie takes a right turn into crazy town, a la, and you know how it does, it does it nice and slowly and subtly, it's like when you want to try weird sexual stuff. And then you push it over the line. Like, you're like, oh my god, wouldn't it be funny if you peed on my chest? Like, so funny. And then this movie's just like, you pee all over my chest. I'm a naughty little girl. I'm a naughty little girl. That's how, at the end of this movie, your entire apartment's covered in plastic. And everyone's drinking out of big gallon Gatorade drugs. It goes all the way. It goes all the way. 
<laughs> it really does. Well, obviously, we're all chomping at the bit to get this over with. So we're going to take a short break to steal our nerves. And when we come back, we will stop making sense really quickly. Are you a terrible person? Have you murdered, raped, destroyed the lives of people in the real world? Well, talk to your doctor about Christian forgiveness. I was a terribly abusive husband, but thanks to Christian forgiveness, none of that happened. Christian forgiveness has been proven in some clinical trials to relieve the effects of guilt, depression, and having to deal with the consequences of your terrible actions. I thought selling my baby for meth would haunt me forever, but now that I've apologized in my head, no one cares what happened to him. Ask your preacher about Christian forgiveness, because just because something happened in the real world doesn't mean you can't pretend to apologize. Christian forgiveness available in stores. Side effects may include real-world consequences, scars to others, hateful delusions, scientific ignorance, and a total lack of moral culpability for your actions. Well, despite that golden opportunity to get well, the getting was good, we're back, so I guess we have to start breaking down this stupid fucking movie. (laughs) Uh, Now, all I'm going to say is that this movie starts with a black screen and people yelling, and it never gets that good again. (laughs) That's the high point. (laughs) Yeah, the the beginning of this movie is a woman mad at her own baby, and (laughs) everything after that makes less sense. Right. A drunk woman who's like, shut up, baby, you're not my real dad, and then everything (laughs) gets less sensical from there. Well, this is the thing. This is the thing for me when I was watching it. I was like, from, actually I felt the opposite because I was like, this is the scene that the, whoever wrote this was like, this is the scene where like, it, like all the conflict stems out of. So we've got to use like a tilty camera and like the black and white effect, <laughs> distorted sound. And it's like, you know, she throw, she definitely throws the baby that we never got <laughs> to talk about. <laughs> And I was like, this movie's going to be amazing. (laughs) I'm so psyched. I was like, that's the devil. We saw it and we'll see it in a later flashback. Nope. No. And then it's like, okay, oh, we got it. She's an alcoholic, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, oh, great. Okay, so we'll see her face her sins later, right? Alcoholism. Nope. Never go back to that again. Never, never again. And also, she's very alcoholic movie. She's very movie alcoholic. Like, she's poured her scotch into a glass with ice. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> she's she's slumped on the floor and can't stand but exactly. she did get a highball glass she just like, she right. crawled over to the counter and was like two fits and one fit all right great. where was i laying against the fridge good let's keep it going i was disappointed actually in their coverage of her alcoholism and her addiction that they talked about i mean she, we'll get to like like the, oh, the explanation of where she yes went to but this is the most that we see her be a drunk. And I was like, bitch, please. I've done worse <laughs> than this. And you're know, like, I'm doing fine now. You're you know not what I mean? even and, at the glory hole yet. I've right? had bigger benders than she had in that flashback this week. <laughs> right. <laughs> also, here's the thing. One of the lines that they said was, she goes, you miss the birth of our son. I was like, wait, mm-hmm. what? Right. You miss the birth of their son? Because of a gig with a two-man marketing team. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Couldn't get around it. I was it. like, I'm sorry. No, you're not a starting pitcher of the Mets <laughs> trying to beat the Pirates. You're not niece. You know what I mean? It's like <laughs> you're some guy who's like didn't know what to do with his life. So he and his college buddy started this pretty terrible marketing company. Yeah, as, as, Based as on their also, logo, yes. Yeah, and as we will see throughout the movie, I mean, spoiler alert, as this gets, they are terrible marketers because the only thing they talk about in marketing is what this cartoon character is going to look like. This is a 45-month project, apparently, where they're just like, I don't know, he's a coffee bean wearing a sombrero. God damn it, we've already been over a sombrero. It's like an episode of Mad Men composed by an insane four-year-old. Like a four-year-old who his dad just wore a Snoopy mask for the first half of his life, and then he ripped it off, and underneath it was Val Kilmer. And he was like, blah, 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 what happened to daddy's face? this That's the advertising campaign that this child would write the next day at kindergarten in nothing but black crayon. That's pretty yeah. close. Yeah. So, yeah, so, like, conflict, alcoholism, drama, tilty camera. And then we move uh, to this flashback of him going through a bunch of photos that he's conveniently, like, 
organized in order of exposition. <laughs> Perfect chronological yeah. order. I wanted so badly for him to pull yeah. out a photo of her like drunk sucking another guy's dick. Like, <laughs> I shouldn't have kept that photo as a pet. That was a poor choice. That well, was... I was hoping that there was going to be something about him because I'm watching this and I'm like, who? first of all, you don't see anything except the photos and then hands. Uh-huh. But there was nothing in the first scene to indicate whose hands these were. So I was like, whose hands are these? I was like, it's the murderer's hands. <laughs> because someone will die. And I'm assuming it's the baby who got thrown, right? <laughs> grown up trying to find his birth No, mother? he just grows up to be very impressionable to religion. That would have been <laughs> such a better movie. Yeah. Holy shit. I also want to point out one more thing about this photo flashback section. The music during it is what a ghost child yeah. sings before it murders you. It's like, <laughs> oh, father, your face. Oh, will you sing and dance your boats? It's just like, no one in Foley was like, hey, did your daughter take a bunch of meth and then do this song? Oh, yes. Yes, she did. Well, I, promised that, I promised that daddy would include her in the movie, so uh, whatever the fuck came out of her face at the beginning of this film. There were so many scenes in this movie where I'm like, the cinematography and the score would only make sense if this guy offs himself at the end of this scene. Yep. For the, I would say for the first half, until they turn into Christianity, I was like, this horror movie's gonna be awesome. <laughs> and the the only blood is unfortunately the blood of Christ. So that was a disappointment. Yeah, that's quite disappointing. So this actor, Jeff, he played Mr. Turner on Boy Meets World in the 90s. Yeah, he did. And he was like the cool guy. And I looked at his IMDb page and I was like, man, this guy killed in the 90s. He had like three series. He had recurring roles. I mean, you would assume that it would only get better for him. That is not what happened to him. (laughs) I feel so empathetic for this actor throughout the entire plight or blight of humanity that is this movie. Because I'm like, this guy just wants to get back to doing what he loves. He wants to act. But, like, this isn't the vehicle. Like, Jeff, like, Mr. Turner, like, you had to turn around. Like, this isn't the right place for you. (laughs) So you just see him trying so hard to, like, make the dialogue normal and like be <laughs> like improv in in my head he just had like a life coach who would like rub his shoulders outside Ew. of auditions you need to embrace yourself and find <laughs> he's got a vision board at home with just a picture of saved by the bell in the <laughs> oh my God. on the other hand on the other side of the spectrum you have this young woman playing nikki or paula or whatever this woman. this is blonde woman yeah what's her name kate yeah. kate kate Fine. Jesse Custer. Okay, great. Is that the actress's name? <laughs> no, that's, that's the character from the last movie. <laughs> oh, Jesus. No, it isn't, but yeah, sure, no, why not? It's not but... You know my real dad. <laughs> um, so here's my question. Why do 90s side curls on women always look like chaos? Yeah, she definitely <laughs> looks like like an Orthodox <laughs> Jewish witch cast a spell on her. <laughs> Like she was reaching for a coupon item at the same time as a rabbi's <laughs> wife, and she was like, "Pay yes. She just w- wiped her hand across the side of her face because she does have those Jewish curls. They make a joke. They're like joke about like, ha, uh, peach walls are classy. You're the one that told me that." And I'm like, "What? Like, ew! Like, wh- first of all, that's no one thinks that's okay except someone who's like." Well, we've got to paint this retirement community, and it's about to be splattered with diarrhea, so how do we go classy? What what can we wash people's last parts of their blood off of? <laughs> it's peach, and Kate knows. So I'm like, okay, Christians love peach walls, but they hate establishing shots. Because Apparently. can I get rid of a two-shot? Anyone? <laughs> Also, this woman, first of all, they are having this conversation. They have known each other for five years. Something they like are, that, yeah. They are having the what the fuck happened to the mother of your child conversation <laughs> for the very first time. 
Yeah, apparently. The, the first scene of this movie where people speak to each other in non-screams, they are having a conversation <laughs> that I, were I this character, would have the very first time upon meeting someone. The Pretty very much. first. It would be like, oh, you have a son? Where's his mother? Oh, she disappeared. How hard did you look for her? Not hard at all. Great. <laughs> now we know this in the first 12 minutes. But apparently, the week before he feels like proposing to her, He's like, oh, yeah, I should probably tell you what, what the deal is with that small child that wanders around my apartment. Oh, that's a child. I thought you had a midget roommate. And I just, I always had a hard time talking to him. Yeah, because I have to say, I thought it was total bullshit that this awesome woman got the shaft. Oh, she and it gets was fucked. There was no explanation. No. And it was like, they... It, 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 Oh, it's one of the things that makes me so annoyed at this movie. It's like they're making the hero a literal psychopathic alcoholic. Yeah, evil, <laughs> evil. The, everyone in this character is every good guy in this movie is the bad guy in any movie written by yes! someone who's not a fucking crazy person. Yes. And yes. I was like, oh, I know we've been dating for five years, but you know what? Peace. <laughs> just fucking double <laughs> birds it away out of the room, and everyone's just like, yeah. And we never fucking hear about it again. But I'm yeah. I'm jumping ahead of ourselves. So they have their date, uh, and then they come home. Uh, to, to the only, to the babysitter, uh, who uh-huh. delivers her SAG after waiver line. By all of the final <laughs> tomorrow. Yay! She got her health insurance for an extra yeah. six months. <laughs> so then we cut to the coffee shop. Where Jeff is talking exposition with the barista. In the, we... v- in the vaguest way possible. The this, deal. <laughs> yeah. This conversation This scene was put in like someone was like, hey, this movie makes a little bit too much sense. Can you guys make it, can you make the basic outline of this movie a mystery? Because they're literally just like, oh, hey man, what's going on with you? Nothing. You know, work. Ugh, do I know it? Sure do. Am I right? How's the thing? Ugh, all full of stuff. But they had to set up. They had to set up that that guy, Jay Underwood is the name of the actor, who makes me feel unsafe because he looks like Josh Duggar. Yeah. Oh, yes, he does. <laughs> yes, yeah. he does. And so I will refer to him from now on as Josh Duggar. Yeah. So Josh Duggar. <laughs> as Josh slightly Duggar rapier like, hey, Josh man. Duggar. Yeah. He's like, remember that book I gave you? Do, 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 do. Like that's the setup. It's like, we've had contact before and uh, psh, you decided not to take it. And so, what happened? Look, your life's gonna turn into garbage, and you'll go back to the book in minute forty-five. I guess. <laughs> and, and I was indeed, like, that is literally a fucking Twilight Zone episode. Indeed, he does. One of the things I loved about this movie is that in the first half of this movie, the main character acts the way I do around Christians. So it was very fun to just be like, "Oh, did you ever read that book?" No, I don't. No, no, uh, <laughs> no, thank you. I thought I about it, it and then I didn't. I have it in home somewhere because throwing that in the garbage is rude, but I, uh, <laughs> the answer is no. He, he literally said the line, I don't know, man, it's full of all of the same stuff you usually talk about, which is so fucking delicious. <laughs> just right. like, yeah, I mean, that was kind of bullshit, don't you think? And they just stare at each other in silence over their coffees. <laughs> so then we cut to the design, the office company, uh-huh. um, and, and, because this is a Christian movie, we need the offensive black friend. And yep. boy, do we get one. And can I point out, by the way, that the black friend's name is T. Has there ever been a black actor in a Christian <laughs> movie that had a fucking name that was a real name? I mean, we've had, what, murder? Criminal? Criminal we've had. We've had Criminal. letters. Nefarious. Yeah, nefarious. nefarious. <laughs> we've never had Dave, you know? Right. No one's ever named Brian. No. It's always like, Scooch, Scooch, what do you think of this? <laughs> <laughs> so- well, actually, you know, in in terms of, like, totally offensive black characters... He wasn't the worst, I have to say. Like, this actor, actually, I was like, hmm. Like, he probably tried to breathe a little bit of life into it. But then I was like, I don't think that Romany Malco is appropriate in this movie. Like, we don't... Remember, guys? Remember him? <laughs> He's the funny guy from Four-Year-Old Virgin. There we go. He's I got it. hilarious, that guy. <laughs> but I was like, that's what this actor is trying to do, an impression of him. Or, that's what the Christian director was like... 
Remember the funny bald black guy from 40 Year Old Virgin? Do that. <laughs> <laughs> Can we get him? No, 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 no. He's no. a normal actor with like, a career. <laughs> he wants money, and he's not willing to accept his payment in Bibles and credit with the G.O.D. <laughs> oh, all right, well, then fine. We'll get someone who looks like him. They all look I'll the same, am I right? Don't say that on camera. <laughs> Meg, I want your opinion as a woman... Uh, the, the, the friend T offers two things that a woman should have in this scene. And I want your opinion. He says that she should make a good sandwich and she should have respect. How do you, how do you feel about that as a general way of finding a woman in your life? I mean, I'm glad someone said it. <laughs> it's like we always beat around the bush. Mad Max is a feminist film, blah, blah, we get it. Um, but actually, I think they stole the Dave Chappelle joke. Remember the Dave Chappelle joke that he did? He's talking about a woman. He's like, just suck his dick, play with his balls, fix him a sandwich, and don't talk to him. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Make him a sandwich was a big theme in this movie. Yeah. The thing is this. It's the most offensive because they're presenting it in a way that seems like, this is totally normal. We're all totally normal. Right, guys? Right, guys? It's not like... yeah. This is Christian. This, and it's not even fucking really Christian, I have to say. That's the thing that is like so fucked up about this movie. This is not, I don't think they should call this Christianity because there's a (laughs) lot of, they just shouldn't. You know what I mean? Like I was raised in like a Protestant household that was like super liberal. I mean, I don't practice now, but like. But I have to say though, that's more the exception than the rule in this country. I think this weird ass misogyny is far more indicative of American Christianity than the liberal Protestant. Especially in Florida. Yeah. I also like how, yeah, it's a give, it's a given in this movie. Like that's, that is, the plot of this movie is not, I don't know, is a woman the property of her husband? It's like, no, 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 no. she's the property of her husband. Yeah. Let's not go crazy. But the question <laughs> is, should she take him back? Even yeah. though she <laughs> abandoned, who the fuck knows? Who the that's fuck? Right. It's it's crazy. It's the given. These opinions shouldn't be on film while moving pictures exist. The fact that there's a camera that can animate images and people are expressing these opinions don't match time. <laughs> there should be a... Everyone should have had to pose for 12 hours for a single photograph of this movie for these opinions to make sense. Then I'd be like, oh, yeah, of course, because well, back then, everyone had to yeah. hold really still and they died at 28 at the ripe old age of 26. Seven, but in this movie they have cell phones and also like if a character just casually was like well, i mean it's totally fine to have slaves i'd be like sure why not movie? <laughs> right why not yep i mean either that or they should just put their like white hoods back on so we <laughs> at least are clear from where it's coming from right exactly. right now i thought it was really funny after watching this whole i had watched this movie at, like middle of the night so it's like five in the morning and i'm coming to bed my wife's already asleep and she's sitting diagonally she's like taking up the whole fucking bed and i end up like crouched on the corner like a little dog you know i'm like court that fucking movie i'm supposed to be you're supposed to get out of my way yeah so interesting contrast yeah i, I watched this movie next to a girlfriend who and next to a fiance i should say who plays the ukulele sometimes at me while i I'm asleep. So to, see, to live in the contrast between a film where it's like, I don't know, what if he doesn't let me pray? And my girlfriend being like, I want to go back to a wicked Hey, sweetie, it's four in the morning. You go in the other room if you don't want to hear the ukulele. Okay, I'm sorry. Let me just, it's nice and warm under the desk. <laughs> I, get, I get less room in my in my bed than my pug. My right? pug gets significantly more room in my bed than I do. Because if I move her, Anna t- rolls over and she's like, don't, you're hurting her. And I'm like, I'm not. She's asleep. And she's fucking tired. Di- it's fine. It's fine. I, this movie is wrong, but sometimes. All right. So then we cut to this weird bro out movie moment with his son. They're playing ball and he's, he's talking about the girl, Kate. Like, he's trying to talk him into a threesome with Kate. He's like, so, uh, what do you think of Kate? And the son's like, I don't know. She's all right. And he's like, yeah, she's pretty cute, right? Like, I mean, hey, what do, what do you do? like, I know you like me, and she really likes you. And she's like, hey. if this movie ended with, like, I don't know, like, we get some drinks, and we just go crazy. We see what happens. I'd be like, oh, okay, sure. Why not? I get it. He's trying to fuck his son and his girlfriend at the same time. Sure. They don't believe in God, why not? <laughs> yeah. Because the thing is, 
his dad doesn't realize that it's totally lost on his son to try and get into a threesome because the kid grows up to be Jared from Subway. That's true. <laughs> That's right. Here's the interesting thing. They have several conversations with this, he's 10, this 10 year old boy where they sit down and they talk to him like he's an adult, which I thought was really kind of great. They're like, here's the deal. This is what we want to do. Like, are you cool with this? Now, sometimes it gets a little inappropriate when the mom comes back into the picture. But I will say this, no one fucking sits down with any of the women and they sit down and talk to her like they're humans. <laughs> no. Oh, that's because they're property, like a handbag. Yes, uh, quite the opposite. They're already a bought handbag. The way that you and I don't like ask a book if we can crack it open to read it, that's how they treat the women in this movie. They're like, I don't know, like, should I loan this book to my friend or not? And it's, it's crazy. This kid reminds me, I spent 48 hours of my life on lithium. Um, and I, during that 48 hours, I leaned on a stove that was on and didn't notice. If this kid, this kid is acting the part of Eli for the 48 hours he was on with, you know, just like if someone came over and cut a slice out of his arm and he was just like, bummer. That's so mean, Eli, that's so mean. He's trying to do his best, don't you think? What is he acting as? He's acting as a kid with third degree autism? <laughs> oh, it's an anti-vaccine movie as well. There was a flashback where she was like, let's not vaccinate him. And then he was like, no, honey, we have to. And you saw his eyes just unfocus in a small cut. That's why she threw him against a wall when they're already vaccinated. There's nothing you can do. Oh, Am I my right? God. NaturalGreenMommies.com, guys. Check out my new blog. NaturalGreenMommies.com. Peanut allergies. Kids have autism because of peanut allergies. Oh, my God. This kid probably had some peanuts. All can right. We, can we please get back to the sexism here? Right. Uh, sorry. So then they have they have dinner. And, oh, this is an amazing scene. And amazing. They have the, they have the, um, the you can't cook montage yes. where she presents <laughs> three perfectly edible and lovely dishes. They look delicious. Yeah. 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 They, they look delicious. They look Fucking fine. And it shows the level of maturity of this god. This is where the movie's, like, because again, at this point, nothing so crazy has happened. But this was the first moment where I was like, this is a movie for grown-ups, isn't it? Because, like, I understand on a Nickelodeon show when someone's like, <laughs> right. broccoli, gross. But this is like, <laughs> this is about alcoholism and reuniting with their family. When someone's like, tofu, <laughs> butternut, squash, bleh. Does it have bugs in it? And she's just, and she comes in and she's so fearful and like, oh, I hope you guys like the food that I'm in. I cannot imagine. I have asked my girlfriend to push a button on a microwave and gotten a no. That is, that is the difference. You want to reflect a true atheist couple? It's like, this is how, do you want to order Thai food? Yes. Great. Okay. I'll order it. Just, what do you want? You know what I want. I'm sorry. You're in the bathroom. Oh my god. Well, this is also the first of many, many montages. Oh, um, man. Every they, eight minutes. They, they lean very heavily on the montage, like that same, like, ghost child music kind of swells, you know, and it's like, the, first of all, the woman who did the music, it, it needs to go back to wherever she came from because it's, it, it like, maybe actually she could be Amy Grant. Just trying to get work. I'm not sure. Like it was that kind of <laughs> awful music, but like she she loved her fairy sprinkle sound. What? She loved the little fairy sprinkle sound. Like like they actually used maybe thirty times in the in the thing the the, the whole little. I'm gonna put this in and post. <laughs> yeah, that's it. That's it. But I was like, wh- this is what I'm back. Like I'm I'm watching them and I'm like, okay, they're literally the director and the writer, the producer. Are like, okay, we need three food dishes that are going to be the opposite of what? Red meat and a big glass of milk. So how do we go far? <laughs> and it's like, really? Like, these are, they think that's how disconnected they are. It's like, they choose, they chose three, like, pretty mainstream and, like, really delicious looking meals. Like, they could have gone, like, way out far to, like, the crazy shit that What's-Her-Face made in Beetlejuice. That would have been <laughs> right. funny. Yeah. Like, she's right. a dumb dumb. ice fried spaghetti, ice cream, and, and beef steak. Like, maybe right. <laughs> if you're going to go with weird, she's a weird cook, don't just be like, I don't know, we ordered from the Thai place next door. What are these noodles covered in? Sausage? <laughs> <laughs> Got them. Well, but in this movie, it's, like, th- th- the nutritional value of what people give you to eat is 
directly proportional to how much love they don't deserve. Ooh. The shittier the food they give you, the more you should love and forgive them. That's that's a, oh another of the strong God. messages in this flick. Bitch, put that a leaf of so lettuce true. on my sandwich. Get back together with junkie real mom. That's, that's right. <laughs> mom no. used to let me lick her needles when she was done. <laughs> This bitch wants me to eat Brussels sprouts. This lady keeps helping me and playing this board game with me when you walk out of the room to make phone calls. <laughs> and the kid also has a very weird... They, he, the kid and the dad have that weird moment where they're both looking at each other like, Psh, this bitch, am I right? No <laughs> kids ever looked at their dad and been like, I don't know about the cuisine. Because kids have two modes. They're like, yay, whatever I'm eating. Nah, nah, nah. But they're like, I'm not going to fucking eat this. They're not right. like, I don't know. What do you think of the plating? Bum, bum. <laughs> bum, bum. You've been chopped. And indeed, she is. Yes, <laughs> well, what she it has. reminded me of, first of all, the set looked like that family room from Breaking Bad. And then the way they were treating the mom or treating Kate, I was like, oh, my God, it's Skylar. They're teaming up against her. She's the bad one. Something awful is going to happen. I was like, it's that kind of dynamic. But, like, without any of the meth and the drug dealing and the killing, you know, it's like, this just sucks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's, and it's like the it's like a breaking bed if nothing had happened. <laughs> right. Ever. It's yes. like if if he had just got not gotten lung cancer and we had just watched them eat breakfast for seven yeah. seasons. No, just just bad. Yeah. <laughs> and eventually they found Jesus. Right. Um, and then we move back to the coffee shop. And the reason that we do this is because the budget on this movie was such that every single location shot had to be used at least five times. You know, they're like, okay, we got a coffee shop, we got a rooftop, we got a bench from Forest we have a Gump. Car. Uh, we, yeah, that's it. That's it, guys. Make a movie out of it. We got a kitchen. Right. We're going to shoot a lot of shit in the kitchen, even when it makes no fucking sense. But we have a kitchen. And I was yeah. I was very distracted by two things in this scene. The first is there's a giant sign in the upper right hand corner of this entire scene that says, buy your favorite bean stuff. Now, I assume <laughs> they're trying to sell like T-shirts or stuff, but it was I was just like, bean stuff. What, like, <laughs> refried beans? Do they mean, like, what kind of swag does this coffee shop have? How much do people like this coffee shop that they're like, oh, you go to bean stuff? Yeah, man, I do. I go to the bean. It was fucking insane. I do want to say, though, that the uh, the Bean Works is in desperate need of this new logo that these guys are working on. Because if you see right. in the background, it basically looks like Chris Rock is mooning you. With a B and a W tattooed on each ass cheek. That's the logo that they came up with for this fucking movie. <laughs> yeah, it looks like a, a an advertisement for BBW scat porn, because it's just a giant <laughs> turd surrounded by the letters B and W. <laughs> There's this really bizarre close to this particular scene, too. It's kind of a weird thing that just stuck with me, because like after Jeff, the main character, leaves, uh, Josh Duggar's still there, and then two women come in, and just, hey, how are you? And and the scene just kind of ends. And it it, it felt like uh, I was watching a fast food training video. <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. And the other thing that's very weird is in this scene, he's like, oh, yeah, how's your son? They, they, we should get our kids together. And he's like, oh, oh yeah. yeah, let's get our kids together. And he's like, yeah, bring him to a week-long religious retreat. Like, why don't you just send him to us for a week? Well, that's a good way for our kids to hang yeah. out. We'll just bring him in. Just change religions. Change your son's religion. So our kids can hang out. Right. And indeed he does. So then uh, they go to, oh, this is where they go to the drive through And you right? can tell he loves him and he's deserving of love because he gives him shitty food here. Right, exactly. Oh and then, of course, he asks his son if it's okay for him to marry Kate like his son dated Katie first. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't know if you've ever become Eskimo brothers with a friend, but that's what this conversation is. It's just like, yeah, so like things are done between you and Katie, right? Like I don't want to make things weird and you're my bro and like I don't want to – I love you, man. Like you know I love you. I love you so – and you do whatever you want, but like I – I'm going to – I'm going to – I'm going to propose to Katie, and his son's going to be like, I don't know, man. You want to step into that bag of crazy? You're welcome to Because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> he's, oh he's fucking God. buddy and not his son. Because at no point in this movie does this man act like he's, it is his child. He no. acts like he has a short friend. <laughs> <laughs> and so we get to we get to kids, kids fest, or whatever it's called. Mm -hmm. And the very first thing that Josh Duggar says, he says, we only have one rule at Kids Fest, and that's to obey Philippians 2. <laughs> Philippians, and I wanted... Yeah. 
I wanted so badly for that to be one of those crazy parts of the Bible. Like, right. They who dash the children's head upon the rocks are joyful. And then all the kids are just like, yay! Or like, her semen was that of a horse and it covered her throat and mouth. And just like, kill the blacks! They all smell different. I just wanted, I wanted so oh my badly God. for this to be one of the crazy parts of the Bible. But then all the, he goes, treat others as being more important than, and every kid in the room is like, yourself and the kid <laughs> to his credit the main kid the lithium kid with his lithium face or his his post botox face is just like what's this fucking shit <laughs> treat others as you want to treat <laughs> but crap. see he had that expression for everything in the movie and i gotta say at this point josh duggar's personality changes and he becomes like a birthday clown with a makeup allergy from right. that point on it's like he's making fun of the character he's trying to play but doesn't realize it yeah He's like, and okay, so we have Big Josh, Whoa. Miss Christina, yeah. Miss Heather, Uh-oh. and I, I wrote little backstories for all of them. So Big Josh <laughs> used to be gay, and he's in, in recovery. <laughs> Miss Christina, former meth addict, pharmacy assistant, going oh. to be a meth addict again. <laughs> and then, of course, there's Miss Heather. Oh, you're all going to like, because she hands out the pizza. Also, she abandoned her child and <laughs> never threw him for it again <laughs> She gave up her son and her ch- husband and just has never, never given them a Google, never done a, a People Search USA, no, no white pages, no Facebook. Uh, but that doesn't matter because she cuts the pizza into squares and will hand it to you. But so that, that's the important turn in this movie. This is, we're in the debate section, right? This is page 25, right? right? So they go to this, they, they sign up for Kids Fest, they go in. And then the camera pans, and there's that sloppy, drunk bitch, Heather. She straightens her <laughs> hair. She's got straight hair now, which means she's a Christian. <laughs> yeah. Curly hair bitches are drunken heathens. Right. And straight hair is like you're proper. I mean, you're right. This is actually like ripples throughout the female world. It's like curly hair bitches, but it's like this is it. <laughs> Fuck this movie. <laughs> Nothing. So, but this begins. This begins the long tease. This is there's like four scenes where the filmmakers are like, "We know that you know, but we know she and he do not know," which is very, which is the same thing as when someone has abducted a child and handcuffed them to the radiator, and they're like, "Your parents are just right outside. Do you want to go outside? Oh, you don't? Not yet." <laughs> Let us go. Please, let us move on to this Please, movie so I can begin was, to heal this, this trauma. Definitely the cinematic equivalent of being handcuffed to a radiator while a rapist teases you that your parents are nearby. That was definitely, that's the perfect analogy. Thank you. I'm glad you brought that. This is also the the moment where, again, he treats his soon-to-be fiancé incredibly terribly, where he's like, no, 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 you get out of here. Get out of here. I'm telling you, get out of here. I'm going to make these dishes. If I spoke that way to my fiancé, she would make me eat the dishes. That's the difference. (laughs) He's like, no, 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 you get, shoo, shoo. We're having man talk in here. If I was like, we're having man talk in here, she'd be like, oh, well, I'll just take your penis with me out of the room, and then I can be part of the conversation, too. I'll be eating it in the living room. Taking up a third of the couch and playing ukulele. <laughs> well, I also oh like uh, this is the scene where he asks his kid, you know, so how did you like church? You know, and the kid's like, well, you know, they sucker me into rote recitation of theological concepts I can't possibly understand while deeply impounding sexual insecurities that will likely cripple me psychologically. But there's pizza. And water play is my yes. favorite. Water play. We get so <laughs> soaked. And I was like, well, it is a religious camp. <laughs> That's what Big Josh is for. <laughs> Well, I got to tell you, too, that the pastor guy, I'm sure we'll get more to him later, but uh, in every other movie, that guy's a pedophile. You know, not not Josh, but the, but the skinny guy that comes out to do the prayer. In every other movie, that guy fucks a kid at some point, off camera, and but in real fucks life, a kid. Yeah, and in real life, I would imagine. Oh, yeah. Wait, is that guy actually an actor, or is he a I don't think so. I think, I, they, I think he really is, a, like, a pastor that they got for this That's part. That's what I thought. He seemed to me like the screenwriter's pastor. Oh, are we right. talking about dead Ron Howard? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> We're talking about dead Ron Howard. This guy the looks ugliest like... human being I have ever seen. Oh I have ever seen. I've, I, I, listen, I worked at a hospital as an intern my freshman year, oh, God, and I worked in a burn ward. I would have brought this guy in to people who'd had half their faces melted off and be like, well, at least you don't look like this yeah. guy, am I right? And they would have been like, oh my God, horrible. Oh, end it all. End it all. This man must not have mirrors in his house, because if he did, he would smash them and rightly slit his throat. 
He looks like a witch brought a ventriloquist dummy to life. <laughs> I had as soon as but he showed up, I said the inability to kill it. <laughs> or stop smiling for even the tiniest instant. It looked like somebody put body paint on a goddamn skeleton. Yeah. It's like Voldemort with a crack problem. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. This is Voldemort's first attempt at, like, like if he had met with his PR person and they were like, Voldy, can you make yourself look a little more attractive? And he was like, Kazoom! And they were like, oh, fuck, no, go back to White Snake. Go back to oh the White God. Snake thing, man. Oh, horrible. Can you turn back into that blonde Nazi? That was good. <laughs> It's like um, it's like if Elaine Stritch shaved her head. <laughs> he looks like if Ralphie from Happy Days got AIDS but never treated it. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> you know what? Oh, he kind yeah, he kind of seems like that moment before in Raiders of the Lost Ark before that guy's face melts. Yes, uh huh. Yeah, it was one of the stages. <laughs> Of having looked oh, into the art. I feel bad for the guy. I really do. I mean, that's the thing. Again, I'm like, he was excited to be in the movie. Yeah. I just wish that he would, like, have eyelids that he could see. <laughs> yeah. He looks like a lizard disguised itself as a human, but badly. Like a lizard's first shot. They were just like, Steve, so no bad. one's going to believe that. About a person. Be quiet. You guys are being negative. Put a dollar in the negativity drop. <laughs> You know what's interesting? I think that this person, this guy, would be so much less unattractive if he wasn't spewing this garbage. Maybe. I don't know. I, I would imagine. feel worse about saying this kind of shit if he wasn't spewing this if garbage. He had I can at a least say that. hood over his head uh, and he was in the elephant man, I feel like I would probably feel a little bit better. If Cher was coddling him in her arms, I think I'd be a little bit more empathetic to this character. You know, baby, there's going to be people out there who's good to you and people out there who's bad to you. Jesus is our Lord and Savior. Cut it out. Cut it out. <laughs> no touching. Um, look it up, guys. Sure didn't let face. That, uh, that deformed person touch her during the shooting. <laughs> uh, oh wow. Gosh, it's true. All right. So then, Wait, have we have we gotten to the part where um, Heather serves the pizza? Yeah, we're just. This is where we are now. So she okay. serves him pizza, and they bond because they like the same kind of pizza because mm. he grew in her womb. You know, <laughs> that was the thing. I had to call and check with my mother to see if it's just a direct lineage thing. But this is a fun game. Let's do an impromptu survey. If you like the exact same pizza as the parent you've never met. Call 1-900, this movie's fucking crazy. So Heather's in charge of food, right? That's her whole fucking thing. She's like, Heather, she's really special. She's going to be your favorite person. And I was like, all this bitch can do is order pizza? <laughs> so, like, she, first of all, she's lazy because, really? And the second thing is I was like, Heather, um, do you know what I want on my topping? Um 10 years of child support. How about that? <laughs> I, you know what I would, you, you know what my bitch. favorite kind of pizza is? Having a mom <laughs> who isn't, I think, dead. <laughs> then we watch the play where we meet the pastor who again looks like Ron Hadward's drowned body. <laughs> who looks like if you shaved cousin it from the Adams family, <laughs> this is what would be underneath. <laughs> looks like you know Ron looks Weasley like? after stage four cancer. <laughs> it looks like remember in the movie Tremors, the little thing that comes out of his mouth. <laughs> yeah, it's <That's laughs> all grown up. So they they want they do a play, which is the craziest play I I want the if anything I want again if I get a billion dollars I'm gonna make a movie that's just this play because there's a sword and a knight. And people are talking animals and fish, and it's just everything is fucking crazy. Right, but play. we only get a musical montage of it because there hasn't been one in eight minutes. Right, they yeah, break a stick and God. eat stuff off the floor. Then a lifeguard <laughs> and Moses get into a fight. They <laughs> sing a song, and then someone does a little hoop hula hooping. It's a goddamn nightmare. I want to see that movie so, so badly. Oh, and let's not forget, Josh Duggar introduces this. He goes, kids have had a great week memorizing verses, the word of God, arts and crafts. It's just like, yeah, you know, macaroni pictures and Corinthians, the usual. Right. 
Your kids are going to have some very upsetting questions when they get home. <laughs> yeah. Should we stone mommy? <laughs> <laughs> yes, we should. Yes, we should. And now we get yet another like ships passing in the night moment where they're about to bring Heather up, but he gets a phone right. call, which that's another running theme in this movie is this guy has no fucking idea that there's a vibrate. Yeah. Yeah. Apparently, the the outside impression, the story that this movie tells of atheism, or at least non practicing Christians, is that we don't have any cell phone etiquette. Yeah. This no. <laughs> this guy does not need Jesus. He needs a fucking vibrate setting on his goddamn phone. Right. He needs the. He needs to just be like, oh yeah. He needs the fucking text. That's what he needs. just like, oh, uh, I'll get this in a second. I'm I'm proposing. <laughs> Oh, and then again, we refer to her food making skills. He goes, she made so many PB and J's this week. And again, I'm like, you did not need to hire a person for this. <laughs> if she made peanut butter and jellies, just someone take an hour out of your day and be like, all right, big Josh, go over there and hand out pizza. We didn't need a whole other staff member. Yeah, but I mean, very likely she's got wet brain. So that's like what she can do. Sure, yeah. She's absolutely. a fall down drunk who's replaced <laughs> her all of the things that used to get her where she needed to go with Christianity and a headset yeah. at you know at Trinity College where Heather's oh, currently. Oh yes, working. of yeah. course, her, her desk thing where she's like, This is my desk, I pick up the phone and I put it back down again and that is fucking it. That is she all has, I can mostly do. Mostly I just leave, yeah. <laughs> She has no idea what the receptionist does either. They let let that roll a little too long yeah, no. for. Her. All right, now we're at the proposal. Yes, yes. At Qdoba. Right, <laughs> Qdoba. I I am not kidding. I have nicer meals when I eat alone. I travel a lot for magic. <laughs> And I, if I ever took me out to a place like this, I'd be like, oh, fuck this. I'm not masturbating tonight. I didn't earn this. <laughs> oh, my God. Take myself somewhere nice. I don't want to. No, no, no. Well, I was like, I feel bad for Jeff because things have gotten bad for him. He's eating in a strip mall. <laughs> At a food. If this panned out and it was a food court. <laughs> I was like, oh, you can't blame him. Panda Express is delicious. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It is wonderful, and it's great to have food poisoning on a plane. <laughs> well, so so now this is supposed to be his big proposal, but as he's walking out the door from this church thing, he kind of half ass sees Heather, but he can't tell if it's really her. And so now he's so eaten up about it that he's just like, oh, and and also they lost the big deal, uh, or for maybe, the first of eighty five times, right? In this goddamn yes, movie. exactly. So now he's just kind of sitting there all mopey and shit at this at this restaurant, sort of having his should I still propose to her while I'm in this super shitty mood kind of a moment. That's what I didn't understand. I was like, it's the easiest. I mean, the movie is over if he simply is like so crazy. I think I saw my my, my dead wife. And she'd be like, oh, my God, that is crazy. Did you have something to say? And he'd be like, oh, yeah, will you marry me? Because you're wonderful and nice right. to my son. <laughs> and you feed him wholesome foods. And she'd be like, I will marry you, in spite of the fact that the first time we talked about your dead wife was last week. <laughs> and then they get married and they have lots of atheist kids and their kid grows out of religion because you stop believing in fucking fairy tales. He reads Name of the Wind instead. And then it's fucking over. Credits. <laughs> It would have been so much better. <laughs> That's the credit music growing. Yeah. So, but it. instead, he answers his phone and it's a huge fight. It's a huge fight. It's a fight. It is a you put it in the wrong hole level fight <laughs> that he answers his phone. Like, she does not know he's proposing. So he's just at dinner and he's like, oh, man, we lost the call. And you'd think, being someone who loves him and is empathetic, she'd be like, oh, my gosh, let's talk about that. But instead, she's like, here we are at the nicest Mexican restaurant in this broken down factory. And <laughs> you can reason with me. So they have a fight and he goes home. And then, in case you missed the credits at the beginning, good thing, because we're going to watch that same big box of pictures again. Yes. And again, if he kills himself at the end of this scene, this scene makes perfect sense. It was staged correctly. It was scored correctly. But if he does anything other than kill himself or go back on the pipe at the end of this scene, it makes no fucking sense. <laughs> yeah, none at all. Also, the music was done by Christian Enya in this point. It was like, <laughs> Mama, Lord, Mama, Lord, Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ, <laughs> <laughs> and then we get back to uh, back to work where there's anger and randomness between him and T. 
Right. And, and this is where T takes on the ice tea role in this movie, which the black <laughs> character often does, which is the black character explains the basic concepts of gravity and human interaction just in case <laughs> someone wasn't paying attention or left to get their popcorn. He's like, so you're saying you thought you saw your wife the other day and now you're telling that to me? <laughs> if any of my friends talked to me that way, I'd be like, hey man, do you smell burnt toast? What the fuck happened? <laughs> so you're saying every time I close my eyes everyone's still there (laughs) (laughs) i don't get it and i gotta say the only thing more offensive than the black character's blackness was the white character's black friendness whenever he's on screen with the black guy it's it's like he he i I don't know anything about the actor at all but the character he's playing at least seemed terrified that any moment he was going to catch the black (laughs) yeah yeah. Yeah. If you talk to, if I walked up to any of my African American friends and talked to them this like that, they would slap me to sleep. They'd be like, Hey man, I'm sorry I had to slap you to sleep right now. But you don't get to talk to me like yeah. that. At which point he's like, Hey man, you get on the phone with Marshall. I'm going to go find my abusive ex-wife. <laughs> but I was grateful so goes- that they did a recap. Like, you know, they, I, they should have done more recaps, I think, like that, because, you know, it's like, it was the same tool employed by, like, dude, where's my car? Every 10 minutes, they had to do a recap. <laughs> right. Because the audience, would, they would lose, it's like, so wait a second, we're still looking for the car, am I right? It's like, okay. <laughs> Thank you, guys. And then, so his idea to get, to, to find his wife is to go to her church find this ugly fucking pastor and say, hey, Skeletor, can I have that pretty girl's phone number and a picture of her boobs? You know you know the one I'm talking about, the one that they gave my kid pizza. Yeah. This pastor looks like he drank some metam- polyjuice potion that was, that was like he was a beaver that drank some polyjuice person that to turn him into a person. That's what but not quite like. enough. No, but no, not no, no. Quite no. Enough he him. goes into the pastor's office and he has to remove Darth Vader's helmet, and the pastor is him, <laughs> is Anakin underneath. <laughs> <laughs> I can't Jesus, give you her phone us. number. It, your lack of faith <laughs> is disturbing. <laughs> Literally, because we're all Christians. Yeah, that's it. That's who he is. Oh, and yeah. all of a sudden we're protective of women. Right, yes, all of a sudden yeah, we care. <laughs> Wait, do you own her? No, no, I don't. Oh, oh, I'm oh, sorry. In that case, if you owned sorry. her, I would give you her heart. Also, if you wanted, I would shave it off and hand it to you. <laughs> if you owned a church directory, I would give that to you, but you don't. Okay. More fucking pictures, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, by the time I was like at this point, it was like midnight and I'm hungry and I my feet smelled and I'm checking Facebook and I'm like, the fucking same scene is still happening. <laughs> okay, but this is, so he gives him her number, and this is when she calls, and they have a, they have a, uh, a meeting. This is when she's like, Jeff, it's Heather, and they're gonna go meet. At the bench from Forrest Gump, yes. At the yes, bench from Forrest yes. Gump. And they meet, they meet like they're standing on either side of it, and I wanted so badly for him to just run and scissor kick her in the chest. Yeah. <laughs> and then just, don't you forget about me. And it's just like Heather's That's clavicle was broken in three places. Yeah. Jeff went on to try anal play with Kate. <laughs> Son grew out of religion because, you know, everyone did the three way eventually. <laughs> So <laughs> just walk on by. And so, but instead, they go the opposite way, and Jeff becomes this like. I mean, I originally was like, "Oh, he's being so mellow," but then I was like, "This is the most codependent guy in the world." <laughs> right? He's like right. shitting his pants. He's like, "Where you been?" That's it. That's what we get. Where you been? And I'm like, "That's like if Jesus came back." actually and then mary was like smoking a cigarette you know like and she's like where you been <laughs> yeah. this movie listen i my dad died two years ago right this guy this guy thinks his wife has been dead for 10 years so maybe right. that mellows you out but if my dad walked in in the middle of this recording you would hear the screaming in georgia i'd be like where the fuck <laughs> you have any idea? I've been saying because this is again yeah. like they've never, they must never have. Ex- no one who wrote this movie or her, I must have experienced loss because loss is not like oh there you are. <laughs> <laughs> this is like you you do that thing where you're walking with someone and they go behind a pole. 
wall and then all of a sudden you can't see them. That's how he reacts to seeing his <laughs> head. You're just like, oh, 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 no, there you go. Okay, I get it. You went around. Oh, okay. You went, you well, went to the different subway turnstile than I did. And this is the, this is like the biggest moment that we need in this movie for it to make any fucking sense is where she finally shows back up and he asks where she's been. And instead of giving us an explanation, we get another montage, but it's not a music montage. <laughs> it's a dialogue <laughs> montage. Oh, uh, yeah. What the fuck is that? That's not even a thing. Yeah. Yeah. She's just like, oh, alcohol, rock bottom, Jesus. You're just getting snippets of that conversation, of, of that. As a matter of fact, I, I'm sorry, I've, I've got to play a clip of this so that you can completely understand just how bizarrely insane this is. Where have you been? It's hard to explain the last 10 years. I was more depressed than I thought. And the alcohol. The drugs. I blamed you for everything. I just kept running. And then I hit rock bottom. They took me to a shelter. Now, there was something different about her. I started praying. I wanted to live again. The, yes, the most important information in the movie, the information that is most vital that we get from this film is just like, ah, you know, and then I'm Jesus, homeless shelter, I've dead this guy, I got fucked by a bunch of bikers, and Jesus, <laughs> whatever, it's, been, it's not important. What's important is, how are you created to Jesus? Right? <laughs> well, that's the thing, is I was like, Jeff has got a couple questions. Hey, where you been? And then, the, for me, the second most important question is, who let you wear that bolo in public? <laughs> That's Who fucking dressed you? Clearly you're still getting your clothes from the homeless shelter. Yeah. I oh, got to check behind your toenails because you're inserting needles in them. Oh my God, you're so high. I should walk away. <laughs> Her eyes certainly looked like it, yeah. Whenever people die at the retirement home, they throw the clothes into the dumpster. But if you're there at 8 p.m., you can get it before it hits the... The adult diaper bag, and that's when it's no good anymore. They have peach walls there. It's very classy. <laughs> very classy. You're the one who told me. Also, I want to say this. I was so disappointed throughout the movie that Heather never talked about her bottom. I was like, I am waiting to hear the stories about how bad it got for Heather. Because oh, yeah. Like just her- even in simple storytelling, that's how good Christianity is going to look. This church is going to look good. But we never hear it. We never hear Heather talk about when right. she was, you know, smoking crack behind a dumpster and, you right. know, fucking homeless dudes with the dad from Elf. We never hear that. <laughs> never. Yeah. No, Going ass never. to ass with Jennifer Connelly. Yeah. Nothing. I would have I enjoyed Her it. Her rock yeah. bottom appears to have been, I got, remember that night we had a fight? I got really drunk, wandered to a homeless shelter, found Jesus and never saw you again. <laughs> right. And, he has this moment where he's like, why didn't you try to find us? And she goes, the courts wouldn't let me. What the fuck does that mean? There's not a court. First of all, you don't need the court to Google. Oh, you have an advertising firm. I'll go, right. you know what? I'll go ahead and Google your first and last name. Click, 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 click. There you are. You run an advertising agency. Or what that about, makes sense. hmm, I'll call your family, your mother right. who I know. <laughs> right. Your anybody, friends. Anybody who knows. Because she knows T, so she could have looked for T. She right. could have looked for anybody. Also, the courts will totally let you find your child. Yes. Under any conditions. <laughs> you're allowed to go under, you are, you are allowed to come 50 years having never met your child and be like, I want to know my child. And if you want to, the courts will be like, yeah, here man, here's your fucking kid. Right. Especially if there's no like, Agree. If you just wandered off into the fucking middle distance, they're happy to show you your kid because you owe ten goddamn years. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And that's that's when I started to realize something about this movie is because I realized that this whole concept, this movie is driven on a concept of Christian forgiveness, which is just no matter what you've done, no matter what horrible thing, whatever co- real world consequences there are, you just get to squeeze your ass cheeks together and you. Nye, nye, nye. I'm super sorry, Jesus. And then everyone in your life is supposed to be like, well, you know, she did apologize inside her head for those 10 (laughs) years I thought she was dead and my son didn't have a mother. Don't happen. (laughs) Right. And then yeah. we get that weird uh, cross-cutting, like that that scene where, like, she's talk, he's talking to T about running into her, and she's talking about uh, to her friends, and, and her friend is telling her what an awesome thing God did. Oh, he brought you together, you know. 
He also did all that other shit that led to the him needing to do this awesome thing. Oh, but yeah, the one where she's like, look at... She goes, God has done an awesome thing. That's you know, where he made you an addict, and then you abandoned your son, right. and then your son was alone without a mother and without God and is destined for hellfire and so is your husband. <laughs> and then he made you drink and go to a rock bottom place and then your husband was alone and met another woman and he fucked her. He fucked her over and over and over and <laughs> over again. And he thought you were dead and he mourned for you. He got over your death. But now you and your son like the same kind of pizza. So <laughs> it's, it was all worthwhile. It was all well, I worth was it. waiting for her to be like, I couldn't ever find you. And then the next scene would be her back in her home. And it's this like, you know, there's like 25 like monitors watching them. You know, like she, she's like breaks into, you know what I mean? It's like, it's a beautiful yeah. mind. She's got the newspaper with the totally. circles around all the letters. And then yes. in the end, oh, if it turns out Jeff and the son are all in her head. Oh, Here's my alternate proposal for this movie, all right? This movie, the second, everything after the first scene of this movie takes place in her head. Oh. It's like the second act of Winter's Tale by Shakespeare. It all takes place in her head. She throws the baby. The baby dies on impact with the wall. Just <laughs> poof, duh, dead baby. And then the whole movie, there's just a flash cut after the credits of her just rocking back and forth in a mental ward somewhere. And Jeff is just looking at her through a window, and he's like, well... It's nice that she has something to entertain herself, and she's like, something tells me I, I made made <laughs> meatballs, you guys. <laughs> meatballs. Exit pursued by a bear. <laughs> <laughs> Which, by the way, what a fucking nightmare that never has an effect on this kid, where he's like, hey, you remember your lunch lady, right? You remember her? She's your mother. She's your mother. Your lunch lady was your mother. <laughs> and the thing is, he because he had such a lack of reaction to the fact that this was his mom indicates to me that Jeff has done good parenting. Right. Yeah. Or that the kid I is so emotionally damaged you. nothing phases him anymore. It's one or the other. Right. Yeah. He just starts to inside. he starts to hold a lighter under his hand like Gary Busey and Lethal Weapon. <laughs> <laughs> like, what do you think of this, mommy? Corinthians four twelve. I shall walk out of the fire unharmed. <laughs> oh, I did some damage. I'm gonna bail. I'm gonna leave. Yeah, no, it's been good seeing you, Heather. Yeah, I'll see you in ten years. I'm gonna find Krishna this time. Oh Krishna. my god. <laughs> so, and then, oh, and then, so he's like, so I broke up with my girlfriend. And she's like, oh, you broke up? Why? And it's like, oh, you don't know? You don't fucking know? <laughs> because you're ruining my life again, you Cause bitch. Because her, her tits were fake. Why do you think we broke up? <laughs> I did it by watching you, Mom. <laughs> broke up. So he's like, hey, it's been two days. I have no idea who the fuck you are, but move in with me and have a second baby. Yeah. <laughs> and she says, Jeff, I don't deserve your forgiveness, but I can't because you don't believe in a wizard. <laughs> right. But you know what, Eli, I have to say? You perfectly encapsulated the insanity that is this movie with, like... Uh, it, none of this makes sense with storytelling. This right. shouldn't be a movie. It should be like a drunken retelling at like a Maundy Thursday church retreat. <laughs> right, exactly. This is what the third string pastor should tell. This is the story a third string pastor should tell yes. at the bar afterwards. He's like, I'll tell you guys this story, all right? And this is real. <laughs> Hi, buddy. His wife left him. She was a meth alcoholic. <laughs> and she told him... If you find Jesus, and he did, and they did. Right. And everyone's like, so do you know when Pastor John is back? No, I don't know when he's back. He yeah, fucked be- some kids. You happy? <laughs> I'm happy. Also, I don't have any skin, and I can't blink. <laughs> Every time I blink, the back of my neck rips open, and I start to bleed. <laughs> So then he goes to the church to have this, and as a non-believer, this is so fucking insulting that again, this is just a given, it's a given in this movie that a, a believer can't 
can't marry a non-believer. It's totally fine for a believer to marry another believer who abandoned them for yes. 10 years. In fact, it's fucking encouraged. Oh, yeah. she abandoned you for 10 years and left you alone with your son? Well, you gotta let her go. She's your wife. God wants you to be together. But if you don't have a magic best friend, if you didn't read Harry Potter and go, where the fuck is platform nine and three quarters? <laughs> no love for you! <laughs> And it, it's so bizarre, too, because it doesn't even signal the turn. We're going 90 miles an hour towards just boring, right. stupid Lifetime movie with a little Jesus yeah. in it. And all of a sudden, we're 90 degrees turned, and we're heading straight to batshit Opolis without a fucking stop. Right. Yeah, absolutely. It's totally... And then, we again, he has a conversation with the preacher where everyone in this movie just completely, calmly accepts this totally insane thing. Yeah. I wanted this to just be tea. I wanted this character to be replaced with T and the preacher's just like, well, she can't marry you because you're black. And T's like, yeah, I get it. I get it. But you know, we never divorced. And they're like, oh, well, in that case, you're fine. I'm sorry I used the N-word so many times. <laughs> just, you know. I was trying to get my point across. Okay, now it's time to talk about the tuck-in time scene. Oh, tuck-in time. Ethan asks his dad to pray for him. Yes. Uh -huh. yeah. Which I felt was the most disturbing scene, actually, in the whole movie. So Ethan is now... Right? He's had enough of the church camp. He's been enough. He's like been hanging out with his mom alone and having pizza and like. He's you got know, the Jesus in him now. Jesus. Yeah. He's got Jesus in him now. And so now we see like there are like horrible rape scenes in movies depicted of like wars and, you know, like killings. Not as disturbing as watching. Yeah, no, I will watch scene. Unforgivable on a fucking Oculus Rift <laughs> over and over again. Before I will watch this scene where he's just like, Dad, will you say a magic spell so I can go to sleep? And he's like, sure, why the fuck not? And again, I literally, I was staring at the screen being like, help your kid. Help your fucking kid. Just take a second. You don't believe yet. Your just take a second to be like, hey, buddy, that's not a thing we do. And let me, but nope, he's just like, fine. Dear God, bring me some Cheerios or whatever. <laughs> go fuck yourself. And then the kid has... An even creepier, or a slightly less creepy moment where he's like, I really like mom, and I wanted him so badly to be like, no, I mean, I like her like her. <laughs> <laughs> we like the same kind of pizza. Oh, so, you know. Mm, good mommy. <laughs> um, what this felt like to me was, because this, this was kind of like a surprise, like, it kind of caught Jeff off guard, right. and then I'm like, this is literally the same red flags that should go up if, like, you send your kid to camp and they're like dad will you put lotion all over my special spots something bad is happening at right, the something camp. terrible happened. Jesus. take your kid out of camp because you love them so how was camp well i found out where i'm the most ticklish oh okay i'm gonna call the police i'm yep, gonna call I'm gonna the police, call the police right right is the now. i really like my counselor oh do you all right great so you're gonna be seeing a counselor from now until ever <laughs> until ever yep. And then, but this is the other thing, just in terms of like the technicality of the, the, like the prayer scene, I'm like, okay, so let's say that this practice has been introduced to this totally impressionable young son, even in any kind of general, even in a general sense, it's so fucked up how they approach it because I'm like, dad, pray for me. And I'm like, you lazy fucking, <laughs> yeah, pray. pray for First yourself, all, pray for yourself, you little bastard. <laughs> And then he laughs and it's like, a, it's like a line that should be, that is clearly directly delivered to the Christian parents in the audience. Okay. Like when Homer Simpson says a funny line that's going to go over the kids' mm. heads, but like the audio, like the adults are going to laugh. He's like, dad, your prayer needs work. Right. And all the Christians are supposed to be like, it's, it's true. Does. It's it really wasn't very does. good at all. He doesn't know yet. He's not going to at all. That. Wingardium Leviosa. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, this is just like gross and creepy. And now they're kind of like, feels like they're like batting Jeff around. You know, it's like only a matter of time. This is the initiation right. process, you know? You all, they, right? You and the audience know what's going to happen. We're going to get him to the right side of things. He doesn't think prayer makes sense. Which, by the way, if you, in, you introduce a 10 year old to prayer, they are not going to take to it. No, you've got to get him I grew up in a religious that. household and I was three and I was like, so we can just talk to him whenever we want? 
And my parents were like, have some jelly beans. Stop asking questions. <laughs> Just stop talking. If I, if I went, if 10 year old Eli went to Christian camp, I'd be like, you gotta listen to this fucking shit they said to me. I would definitely be like, can you pray for me? I'd be like, can I go to arts camp? Yeah, right. Now, this is, okay, so we already touched on the fact that a big, big, giant part of this movie is the idea that Christians can't marry non-Christians, and that's just accepted as a given, even though I haven't found it anywhere in the fucking Bible. I found that uh, Jews can't marry black people, but I haven't found anything about Christians not marrying non-Christians anyway. But then it gets even fucking weird. It really just goes of how our family would react. <laughs> so, like, oh, so nice to meet you. She's so well-spoken. <laughs> Very well-spoken. That's just... That's just God looking out for us <laughs> down the line. Gotcha. She's got such a nice bolo. Did I you like, see the bolo? I like Bernie Sanders. He marched with Martin Luther King. <laughs> Are you aware of Mr. King Jr.? Not the, the junior one. That's who Bernie Sanders marched with, apparently. <laughs> so, <laughs> is that a Jewish old lady? Yeah, that's a Jewish character. That's a Jewish character, Meg. Can so I that's a, support that's a that? Jew doing a Jewish character right there and not, <laughs> not quite hitting it, but that's okay. Bernie Sanders, <laughs> Thank you. Oh, there's my Jews. Bernie represents all of us. <laughs> so he's not allowed to marry her if she's a Christian, but now we discover that because he never signed the divorce papers to the woman that the law thinks is dead. He never signed the divorce papers. They're still technically married, so she's still his property. Right. He declared her dead, but he didn't divorce her, so it's fine. Christianity, if you think someone's dead, it doesn't mean you can't still fuck them. They're all yours. (laughs) (laughs) And that's when we get to the most spectacularly bizarre fucking moment in this movie, in my uh, estimation, where uh, after after she learns, they they go back to Ron Howard's ghost, and he explains, oh, no, you're still married, and he owns you, and he owes your dad 50 shekels, something like that. Um, that's when you get her talking to her friend and yelling, I'm supposed to submit to him. What if he doesn't oh, yeah. let me pray? <laughs> yeah, Fifty Shades of Love. Yeah. This was yeah. Uh, yeah, what if he doesn't let me pray? Now, Meg, I have a question. As a woman who has to submit to her husband, <laughs> follow with me. If if your husband did not allow you to pray, how how do you think is that have you crack talked rock? About- I would just go right back to crack rock. <laughs> <laughs> Does he, have you and him talked about when you are and are not allowed to pray? <laughs> what thoughts you're allowed to what think? What thoughts you're allowed to read, etc. Yeah, read? You're allowed to read? read? Yeah. <laughs> octagon? Who taught you octagon? <laughs> um, yeah. So, and then we get uh, this 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 weird moment where T's fulfilling his function, his dude wears my car function of explaining the plot again. So he's like... Right, he's iced tea Yeah, again. exactly. He's saying, are you telling me that when... You thought you weren't married, you couldn't be married, and now that you are married, you couldn't not be married because Mary had a little lit. Wait, wait, what? Now, what are you? What the <sighs> fuck are you telling me? This doesn't make any sense anymore. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. for a second, that character steps out of the movie, and he's like, "Wait, doesn't that make no fucking <laughs> sense?" And he's like, "Oh no, don't worry, it totally makes sense." And he's like, "I think this is bullshit." <laughs> yeah, we'll put a sprinkly I sound effect in there. This is bullshit. Let me see the script. <laughs> I just don't understand how any women actually worked on this movie. I don't understand because how many people worked on it. this has got to be a union movie, right? It's a SAG, probably a SAG low budget. This is Lionsgate. Yeah. This is fucking Lionsgate. All right. The sa- it's, fuck, it's not just like, how did anyone look at this script and not just go, you couldn't, if someone walked up to me on the street and was like, hey, Eli, would you let this movie get made? I'd be like, oh, no, I'm taking this. Is this the only copy? You have to catch me now. Well, if you like this movie, you have to catch me, and I would fucking sprint away. My 20 minutes of cardio is going to pay off. Just like, no! I can't believe that there was nothing about abortion in this movie. Like, that is the number one thing here that's like... It's the only misogynistic from box the they didn't yes. tick. Yeah. Right. Yeah. All we needed was for the pastor who looks like uh, Peter Pettigrew <laughs> to just be like, you know, since she's your wife, no such thing as rape. Just saying, <laughs> might warm up the oh my god a little bit. Sure implied the fuck out of that though, didn't they? Wasn't illegal until yeah, 1995 really or whatever the fuck they made. <laughs> wow. All right. Well, unfortunately, there's still a lot of this movie to go, but we're gonna take a quick break because damn it, we've earned it. So let me give Act Three the hard sell here. 
Will Jeff and Heather reconcile their broken marriage? Will we ever hear from the blonde chick again? Will he let her pray? Find out the answers to these questions and more when we return for the exciting conclusion. Okay, when we return for the conclusion of No Greater Love. He was so nervous. He spills the tomato sauce all over the place. (laughs) (laughs) Such a mess. But how did you guys meet? Oh, well, we met when we were kids. Oh, young love. Yeah, yeah. And then when we were high school sweethearts. Adorable. (laughs) But then he was at work too much, so I abandoned him and my son for 10 years. But listen to this. 10 years later, I'm working at a church desk. Wait, wait. I'm I'm sorry. You did what? Oh, I abandoned him and my son. Holy fucking shit! That's horrible. What? Okay. Well, what? To, to be fair, I, I did miss our anniversary. <laughs> you abandoned your son and husband for ten years because your husband was busy. <laughs> well, I mean, drugs, homeless shelter, rock bottom, Jesus. Those are just words. What What do those words mean? Corinthians. Jesus inside of me. Okay, listen, 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 that's, that's not the point. When we met up again, I was about to propose to another woman, but when I saw her, that was over. Wait, wait a minute, you, you broke up with your almost fiancé because the wife you thought was dead came back? Yes. That's, that's horrifying. Is she, is she okay? Is she- I have, I, I have no idea. Listen, you're missing, you're, listen, you're missing the point. The point is when we met up again, I realized that I needed to get right with the Lord and change my life to deserve her. Wait, wait. Let me get this straight. She abandoned you and your infant son for 10 years. And when you saw her again, you broke up with your long-term girlfriend and soon to be fiance, but you felt like what you needed to change was your religion? Yes. Uh, we're gonna go. Yeah, I think we should go. Well, <laughs> they were rude. Am I right? Atheists. Methamphetamine. Pizza. Alcohol. Pizza. Alcohol. This summer, their love was real. I love you. I love you too. But there was a problem. What's a, you come in for a drink? I, I can't. But why? A completely made-up problem. The floor is lava. From the producers of No Greater Love and Fireproof, two movies where the thing holding people back from happiness is a set of made-up rules that make no fucking sense. Okay, what if I put, like, cushions on the floor? Then I could walk across the cushions. But if I fall, I'm dead, and I have to go to jail. A love story about two people and the invisible fucking reason they can't just have what they want. The floor was lava. The curtains are snakes. Jesus fucking Christ. All right, we're back for more of this shit. When we last saw our hero, we were watching a different movie. Because Mm -hmm. this movie doesn't have any fucking heroes. It is devoid of likable characters now that the blonde chick's gone. But the assholes in this movie were trying to decide how many shekels Jeff's uh, gonna owe Heather's dad after all of this stuff I do believe last we heard from him. Yep. And this is, I believe, uh, when we left off, this was the part where, um, Jeff was pawning off the kid to go send yeah. him to, to church or whatever with right. mom. At yep. which point the kid's like, hi mom! And I'm just like, wow, fast. That kid attaches, <laughs> that's my sign that this kid is not healthy. He attaches very yeah. quickly in this film. Yes. Kate, uh-huh. who he knew for five years was in a relationship with his dad and played board games with him. He's like, Kate, who? This is mommy now. <laughs> <laughs> like something out of the fucking omen. <laughs> <laughs> and then she gets told by Grace under fire, right? She goes back to her. And the one piece of advice that she gives, she says, think how you can influence your son. Right. You can make him more Jesus-y. That's, that's what she's after. That's what right, matters. Exactly. Right? Oh, and then, again, because everyone wants to fuck this kid, they have a date. They go on a mm-hmm. date. Yes. Her, the son and yes. the mom go on a date. And you can tell that she loves him because she's giving him unhealthy right, exactly. food. She's like, look, it's the pizza we like. And then she shows him what a useless horror of a shell of a woman she is, where she's like, this is my desk, and sometimes there's pencils, and but nothing too sharp, because if I do, I remember. I remember when I had to kill Belinda over the last newspaper blanket, so they, I just tell them that just if I need something cut, I bring it into the office. I'm just, I'm just a shell of a person. Who are you? 
Oh right, I'm your th- I'm your I'm your mom. <laughs> <laughs> right. And then she says again, she says, for the rest of my life, I want to be a great mom. And I just wanted to I just wanted her to be like, unless I leave again. And then yeah. I can just <laughs> apologize right. again and totally forgive <laughs> myself and then be the best mom. And yeah. then she asks um, her ten year old for forgiveness. Which is so fucking I mean, that's like emotional incest yeah. that we're right? watching. <laughs> yeah, with like set dressing on it. Um, You're ten. You understand the consequences of my abandonment of you and your father. Do you still love mommy? There's a caramel cow tail in it for you if you do. <laughs> it's got a creamy center, and the lithium makes everything taste like cotton. <laughs> and then we're back to the montage. We're back to the fact that the music is now trying to cover up terrible storytelling, like a cheap well- cologne. Yeah, because like every time the script called for anything with any emotional heft, they just did a musical montage where yeah. you could see people talking, but you couldn't hear the words. Yep, exactly. So they have a date montage, and they talk mm-hmm. about like them being a couple and whatever. And isn't that when she says, um, "Can I show you a secret?" Which, yes, uh-huh. which is then where it turns into scat porn. Yeah, right. <laughs> Because you don't think, can I show you a secret? And there, it's got to be something. It's always you know. your butthole. If someone wants right. to show you a secret, it's a piercing or your butthole. That's the only thing. <laughs> Those are the only things she, in the twenty first century that are a secret. <laughs> there is one other thing, and that's when the alien parasite bursts out of your stomach. Right, exactly. Which yeah, would have right, been right, better exactly. than Jesus. Which, it would have made a lot more sense too. And what it turns out to be, she's got two very gaudy, heavy necklaces, like. Like, you know, like quarter inch thick silver chains that like at no point ever popped out of her shirt. How is that possible? Mm. And at the end of it is her, oriz- Heather's original fucking wedding yeah. ring. I wanted yes, it to be uh-huh. her dick. I just wanted her to pull out a giant, <laughs> a giant wet. Can't believe you didn't notice this back when we were drinking Uncircumcised a lot. And penis. Then- <laughs> and then, this is the fetus that fell out. Do you remember? <laughs> I named it Josh. I bronzed it, and it was a miscarriage. But I've saved it because we believe it's a person. Right. <laughs> and fucking Mike Huckabee comes on and starts to give it mouth to mouth. Yeah, and then he jizzes on it. You know what I mean? And it's like yeah, yeah, I yeah. showed you a secret. It's like, oh my god! I just want to point out before this, in, there's a scene where he has coffee again with Josh Duggar, and Josh mm-hmm. Duggar says mm-hmm. he just wants to. Sh- she just wants to show you respect, like a dog yep. with its owner. Yep. <laughs> yes. And Meg, I want yeah. your thoughts. How as a woman? Because I listen. I never get compared to a dog as a woman. Do you think? <laughs> How does it feel to have that relationship compared to a dog and an owner? Is that like a positive thing for you? You know, it's one of those things that's like, it's, there's no way that any woman who's self-respecting would even identify with this character. It's like, if I was going to confuse an actual compliment with what, like, the construction worker hollered at me. Right, exactly. It's like, oh baby, I'd suck your tits. What? Thank you. You know what? He thinks I'm really pretty. I really, you know what? No one said anything. I should probably go home and change. It's like, I don't base myself worth on that and neither should fucking anybody else. But it's like, you know, like what, what Josh Duggar's now the fucking like dog whisperer. He's like, she's the leader of the pack. Now it's now you. And then something amazing happens. This is an amazing scene because they're at Bible study. They're in Josh Duggar's like creepy, like he's got like a that thick flannel couch. There was just like, that's so many molestations happened on that. Yeah. Couch those couches are house. so hard to get blood and semen off of. <laughs> and them. then he's in the kit. Jeff's in the kitchen on his razor phone. And then mm. Ethan comes up to him. Right. To, to, to scream about how 86,000 points. points. And like, it was like a Meisner exercise. <laughs> it was like, just, okay, Ethan, you're just going to say that until you get a reaction. Okay. <laughs> Just... And in any other scenario where a parent is talking on the phone and a kid is trying to get their attention, the parent is going to yell at the kid. He's like, stop. Yeah. Because that's how fucking parenting works. Right. right. 
but like little baby fucking Jesus can't be yelled at apparently. Right, which makes one wonder what is the appropriate response when you're on a a vital business call and your kid's like eighty six thousand points, eighty six thousand points. And, sorry, uh, Dave, I gotta get off the phone. My son scored eighty six thousand points. Yeah, I'll call you back later. All right, go with the Johnson <laughs> Company, whatever. So you scored eighty six thousand points. Yes. All right, great. Now I can make my fucking phone call so we can eat food. <laughs> and what is 86 unless you're playing madden i'm unimpressed right. there's no game where that's a good right, score exactly exactly and he's also it's like he says eighty six thousand points and then when he comes in the room after yelling at him everyone acts like he put a fist inside him everyone he's just right. like daddy <laughs> yelled at me and everyone's like how could you <gasps> make a business call during the day <laughs> <laughs> bible study no yeah. less where, at which point we get a flashback to something that Josh Duggar has never said, but it's great. He says, Heather has Jesus Christ living inside of her. And I was like, is yeah, that right? Thing? I mean, I'm not a Christian, so I don't know, but that's fucking crazy. <laughs> Just like... You eat enough of the body of Christ and eventually it assembles, it forms inside like... Oh, Voltron. yeah, exactly. So. I was going to say that that in and of itself is suggesting that if Jesus Christ is the Lord and Savior, and Jesus is inside her, then aren't we our own messiahs then? Okay, Deepak Chopra. <laughs> <laughs> right over but my head there that with all that theology. totally, like, against what, I don't know, oh, it's no. all very Who the See, fuck like, knows? It's not a complete the- system. <laughs> If you replace the word Jesus with the pod people in this movie, it makes complete fucking sense. Oh, it makes a ton of sense, yeah. The thing is this, what would have made sense was if Jeff had smacked Ethan. That actually would have been a heightening, interesting move. Something that's like, okay, well now Right, well the movie would have had some balls at some point at least, yeah. It's like, oh, okay, well that's scary, and you don't believe in like love and tolerance which is what the bible is teaching because you think it's okay to smack your kid you can only smack your wife job right yeah exactly actually the bible expressly tells you to smack your kid in several spots but yeah but you know yeah, smack exactly. your kid smack your wife smack your it's, it's, it's smack all your, your problem not as much smack people. your cow and shit so it's all the same thing. There's a okay. so then but i mean jeff does take that to heart because in when he's like in the lying in bed scene he punches his pillow so good. <laughs> so, so great. Yeah, yeah I really no. felt the actor going through that experience, and he was like, oh, I was Mr. Yeah. I guarantee you that they cut out the sound. Like, <laughs> I was Mr. Fucking Turner. <laughs> Man, I was going to be like the next Val Kilmer. I had a whole action thing set up, and then I took one summer off, and I just fucking... Ashley said she wanted to see Europe, and I was like, ah, the career will be here when I get back, and now... Now the director keeps putting his hand in his pants every time, every time I turn around. <laughs> so then he signs, he singly signs the divorce papers because you can just, you can just divorce someone on one signing. You can just divorce <laughs> at someone. It's like, here, divorce. <laughs> no. Drive by divorcing. That's, that's here, the yeah. theme of the movie. Writing your name in cursive is magical. Exactly. Yes, yeah. Exactly. So then we end up with, you know, the, 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 the sermon close of this movie where he's talking to Josh Duggar. Oh, wait a second. Just... Wait, sorry. I lost where I was for a second. He says, I'm releasing her, Dave. I signed the papers, right? That's the, that was yeah. the yes. line. Yeah, though. exactly. Exactly. I'm yeah. releasing her. Like he just gave Dobby a sock. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we did a good ex alcoholic. I'm free. I'm free. <laughs> Do me well. And then he says, I see it. It's real, isn't it? And then that's the line from every sci fi movie where it's like, Yes, Jeff, artificial life is real. <laughs> so, like a line out of ex machina. Um and then of course when when uh when he says that he released her Josh Duggar argues back, no, God gave Heather to you. Right. Gave? Really? Gave her right. to you? Yeah. Exactly. No, I, had, I paid 50 shekels for it's that. It's like bitch. when you want to return grandma's Christmas present and mom's like, no, okay? <laughs> Just no. And it's like, I don't <laughs> want it. And it's like, no, 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 you're going to keep it. You're going to keep it and you're going to wear it in front of her. God gave you Heather and you're going to keep her and you're going to fuck her in front of God, all right? It's a nice <laughs> gift. And you know what? God's not going to be around that long, honey. Honestly, God is getting a little bit old. <laughs> 
He's about 2,000 years old at this point, and the truth is he's not going to be around forever. All right? And it so. means so much to him to see you fuck that wife he gave you. <laughs> it just makes me wonder, what is it that these women are getting out of this? Like, the women on the Upper East Side are getting millions of dollars. They get whatever they want. They're part of these social circles. That's what they're getting. They sign contracts. What the fuck are these women getting? 19 kids and yeah. counting. No, they're getting fucked since birth is what yeah. they're getting. They're getting they're being taught that like that's how you value yourself. That's what your mother told you. That's what your grandmother told you. You know, you grow up in Nebraska where everybody seems to be reinforcing this message that the way you value yourself is how submissive you are to your husband and how good of a fucking sandwich you make and you can't help but grow up believing that. Right. Yeah. I recommend Vicky Garrison's no longer quivering blog right. by the way. Uh, if if you really want to dive into what it's like for those women, it's it's terrible. Oh, who the fuck horrifying. knows? That's horrible. Yeah, I can't think about that too long. It bums me out because that's that's the kind of thing that instantly like my depression loves that and jumps right on it and is just like you know there's yeah, real right. women who believe that Eli and I'm like no man I'm trying to go to sleep no 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 <laughs> right now there's some woman who didn't want to have sex who had sex tonight and you're sitting mm. in your warm comfy and I'm like no man come on we have work tomorrow because mm. I'll just be up in four in the morning being like how to volunteer for crisishotline.com <laughs> <laughs> oh, All the worst. You're such a good guy, Eli. Yeah. See it? Or at least he pretends to be on the podcast. Right, exactly. <laughs> Anna's making a sandwich in the other room right now. <laughs> <laughs> that she's about to fucking eat herself. Right, exactly. Yeah, right. <laughs> oh, did you want some? Twinkle, twinkle, twinkle on the ukulele. You uh, know what's <laughs> funny, though? A Anna sounds like an abuser sometimes, the way you describe her. <laughs> <laughs> she kind of, she's very strong. <laughs> Back to the movie. <laughs> So then they right, get so back to the just... house. Oh, oh, oh <laughs> who creepy. needs a cry break? <laughs> <laughs> so we get back Only to the, the house. Only the Patreon subscribers will know I'm being abused. <laughs> 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 For just a dollar an episode, you can watch Eli. You can hear Eli get hit in the background. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh god, she's been drinking. Everyone be quiet. Everyone be quiet. <laughs> be cool, be cool. Oh my god. Oh god, her bow broke. Her bow strings broke. Guys. It's my fault. It's my fault. I should have checked her bow. I should have checked her bow. It's fine. It's fine. I make her hit me, guys. I make her Because I don't yes. listen. I'm so stupid. <laughs> This is she's very strong. She's a very strong woman who we like married. Very, very strong. Very strong. We love her. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So um great. So then they arrive home and she is she has returned the divorce papers with return to sender. Now I did not realize that he gave her a key instead of an engagement ring at the beginning. Right. So I thought she <laughs> broke in, which made this the end of Wait oh, Until a, Dark. I just amazing. wanted it to pan out to like a broken window with blood on the edges <laughs> of the glass. Or just being like <sighs> So here I am and I won't be ignored. Oh that's <laughs> hilarious. <laughs> And then she has, I, I can't even remember, I, just, I, I wrote down the line, because at this point it's like five in the morning and I'm just not paying attention, but I just scrawled this out as, as, as a three-year-old scrawls with crayon, the line, the more I love Jesus, the more I love you. Right. I don't yep. even remember who fucking said it, but that's an she actual line it. in this she movie. She says, the reason I'm back <sighs> is because of Jesus Christ. Right. And, and the more yes. I love him, the more I love you. In that, and in AKA, that, yes. let's have a four-way. With Jesus. <laughs> And the kid. And the kid, right. Yeah, the kid would well, be it's, the... it's it's automatically a five-way if you bring Jesus into it, though. He's three dudes. Right. It, it gets complicated. Exactly. But, uh, father he can himself. fill all the holes. He, he does bring extra holes, though, so it ends up working That's out. True. Um I and, picture and Jesus was... as a sassy gay best friend. Like, she's just drinking with him. And he's like, honey, he is right for you. Oh, my You've God. You've got to go back to him. And she's like, I don't know, JC. And he's like, you have to listen to me. Do you remember when I said you needed to do Soul Cycle twice a week and you love Soul Cycle? And she's like, you're right, Jesus. I do love Soul Cycle. <laughs> oh, my God. Heather, do you remember when you were like, should I go to Cliffside Malibu to rehab or should I listen to this <laughs> mentally ill woman who's sharing a cot with me in this homeless shelter? And I was like, honey, I put somebody in your bed for a reason. Hello. All right. Okay, Jesus. So how are you? Oh, well, Brian's back in town. 
<laughs> Jesus, a sassy gay best friend. Oh, and then, of course, this has one of my favorite lines in the movie. I will never leave you again, the woman who left you for ten years. Wah, wah, to which he wah. responds, <laughs> I won't let you. And uh, that's basically the closing line of the goddamn movie. Right. Yep. You're my property, so, you know, I'm going to shackle your ass up now, according mm, to that Jesus right. book. But don't... Except for... Yeah, it's not quite over yet, is it? Right, because then there is a post credit scene. The movie ends, and they're happy, and then there's a post credit scene where she tries to cook, and it's mm-hmm. spaghetti and meatballs. Bow, bow, and everybody bow, 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 bow. loves her, because that godless heathen woman made him eat arugula and shit. <laughs> Go fuck yourself. <laughs> Meanwhile, we we pan out, and Katie's in the corner, like, fucking wrist slit just outside, <laughs> looking in the window, you know? Just twisting a rabbit's neck. <laughs> <laughs> While Country Strong plays in the background. <laughs> oh, my God. All right, so I want to ask you guys the same thing that I was asking myself as this flick ended. What the fuck just happened? Yeah. Oh, who the fuck knows? This was like someone at Lionsgate's crazy Christian brother... Like, finally, at Thanksgiving, was like, I've got a movie idea for you, man. And just year after year, he's like, you got to <laughs> listen. Finally, he was like, you know what, Dave? Great. Let's do it. What's your movie? It's about a man who owns his wife, and even though she leaves for 10 years, he takes her back. Sure, Dave. What a great fucking idea. And he just sarcastically produced that entire movie <laughs> at Lionsgate. He was like, oh, we just did Batman Begins. So you know what's next up on our roster? No Greater <laughs> Love. A story about a couple that gets back together for no fucking reason. Are you having a good time? Dave. Oh, look at me renting cameras. Man, man. He's just slapping his hands on the computer. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, like, what was the message, though? What was the moral of the story? Who is this movie for? Here's the thing that's really scary to me. I think that, especially now that we're seeing the people who are so excited about Donald Trump as a real candidate. <laughs> I think that there are so many people who would like this movie and believe in the themes of this movie and want to give hard-earned money to televangelists, to the Republican Party, to whomever that is. I think there are so many more people than I could possibly imagine. That's who the movie is for. That's who believes it. Women (laughs) as fucking hell. Yes, it is. Women who actually are buying into this bullshit and believing it. I mean... Part of me, in a way, is actually a little bit glad this movie is out there. It's such a bad fucking movie that maybe someone who's on the border of, like, should I do this, would be like, oh, my God, this movie's so bad. Yeah. I totally... <laughs> I, you know what? I'm going to go back to... Satanism. I, yeah. exactly. I think this movie serves a dual <laughs> evil purpose. See, I don't think this movie is aimed at men to take their wives back. I think this movie is aimed at Christian women to take their abusive, alcoholic husbands back. Yes. Based on the idea that Jesus changes them. And then it reinforces that message Mm. with the, and it doesn't fucking matter because once you're married, you own, he owns you. Oh, that's really fucking <laughs> yeah. Wow, scary. that's a disturbingly that, probably correct interpretation. That is the message. Anyway. So they make it a... It's like they did in Fireproof. In Fireproof, they made it the mother who right. used it on him because it's weird for a man to have been abusive to his wife, but for a wife to have been abusive to his husband because we don't like... We don't culturally accept that as a real thing, even though it's incredibly real and problematic. We don't culturally yeah. accept it, so it's like, oh, okay, whatever. But what they're trying to do is they're trying to take that sort of reverse of the situation, and they're taking women with, like, broken wrists and stuff. It's just like, oh, no, he went to Bible study this week, and it's like, it is, and I have to submit to him. So, you know, wow. I'm glad I, that's what this movie is trying to do. Yeah. yeah. That, wow, that was the major really theme scary. I picked up was God hates the breach of legally binding rape contracts. That was right. pretty much, yes. yeah. yeah. More importantly, though, we we do get a good test to see if you're ready for marriage for women. Would you honor a rape contract with this man? And for men, would you waive a rape contract with this woman? It's a oh, good test. <laughs> that's so fucked up. All right. Now that we're all good and depressed as hell, uh, Meg, we kind of like to avoid thumbs up, thumbs down type rating systems on the Gamcast. So instead of asking how many stars you would give this or something like this, uh, I want to ask you, what's the most adorable thing that you would murder with a spoon rather than watch this movie again? Oh, my God. Um, probably an Ewok. <laughs> 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 See, I that would was... do that just because they fucked up that movie for me. But okay, all right. Oh, I saw that movie when I was young enough that I love the Ewoks. 
I was just old enough to be disappointed by yeah. that movie. I was just old enough to go, wait a minute, the goddamn Empire gets taken down by teddy bears? What the fuck did I just pay for? Um, See, um, I was, uh, yep, yep. I was, <laughs> I'm from 1987. I thought it was great. Yep, I was <laughs> young enough. Well, yep, that's yep. the thing. I was young enough to be like, holy fuck, teddy bears can take down the Empire. I can do <laughs> fucking anything. But dude, when the one teddy bear yeah. dies, that was a major turning point in my life. It was when, te- uh, when he's so like, oh, I was horrible. like, oh, oh, the, so the teddy bear goes down, then all these motherfuckers yes. better go yes. down. That's how I, I remember. Too. A, a desire for vengeance in my eight-year-old body just being like, well, then yeah. some motherfuckers got to get taken out. Good. Right. A whole spaceship full of people gets blown up? Great. I'm glad. They killed a teddy bear. I liked that teddy bear. I, I had problems with the Tauntaun dying, I'll, I'll admit. I was right. a little younger yeah. on that one. Does that mean that someone somewhere out there likes Jar Jar Binks? <laughs> some, oh, wow. That's pretty some terrifying. Kid somewhere. That's quite a frightening thought. That's actually more frightening than the whole rape contract thing. Well, Meg, <laughs> congratulations. You made it through the whole fucking thing with us. Thanks, guys. Um, if our audience wants to hear more from you, uh, wants to see more of you, where, where could they go? Um, well, I have a YouTube page um, that's like dot Meg Griffiths, I think. And I have a website, MegGriffiths.com, that has all of my videos and the days that I perform in New York. I perform um, live improv every Saturday night with a very, very funny improv team um, at the People's Improv Theater. It's called the Baldwins. So, And that's how I met Eli, doing improv. Woo! Right on, Woo! right on. Awesome. And, of course, we'll have all of that linked on the description box for this episode. Aww. Meg, thank you once again for suffering through this with us. You guys are hilarious. I do it again. For you and for Jesus. I have a <laughs> sneaking suspicion we're not going to have a lot of two-time guests on this show, so we may just take you up on that. Oh, my God. And, of course... That's going to do it for our review of No Greater Love, but that's not going to do it for this episode because before we go, we're going to take a quick minute to talk about what's up next and a quick preview review. So, Eli, what's on deck? Well, we'll be watching the classic 2015 film War Room. And by classic, (laughs) I mean it just came out. Yeah, yeah, it's coming out this weekend, actually. That's awesome. Well, I I guess by the time everybody hears this, it'll come out. I've come out last weekend, and I found the preview for this one super interesting because I don't know that I've ever seen this before. This preview actually starts with clips from other movies that aren't being previewed. Right, exactly. It's just so, just in case you're worried that this movie's not going to be crazy, you remember this crazy piece of shit? <laughs> right. We made that on purpose. That's what? the level of crazy you can come to expect from us. By the way... Neither of those scenes has any consequence in those two movies. No! The fireproof scene is takes 30 seconds. The majority of fireproof, as we learned, is about a couple that should get a divorce not getting a divorce. <laughs> Which, if I'm catching the, the, the preview right on this one, is exactly what's in store for us in War Room as well. Yes, once again. But however, this time, because... Uh, so this is written by the Kendrick brothers. Mm-hmm. Uh, two white guys, and so they thought, what could possibly be more offensive than Fireproof? Fireproof starring African Americans. Because <laughs> nobody knows the struggle of African American Christian relationships <laughs> like two white middle-aged men who run a ministry that's been charged with tax fraud. <laughs> no better knowledge of it. And with that knowledge, this trailer is, I'm going to say, the most racist thing I've ever oh seen my in my God. entire life. Because <laughs> you just have to remember, all of these African-American actors are delivering lines written for them by white middle-aged men. Right. Which puts a very sinister spin on it. Yeah. And then, of course, the, the older African-American female character talks in a way that if I were to imitate it right now and someone were to take that clip and use it to charge me with a hate crime, <laughs> they would be correct. <laughs> There is no way to imitate this woman's voice for the show or even for this preview of the trailer without committing a serious hate crime, without embarrassing myself and others. And There's a whole no race way for me of to... people, yeah, no when kidding. When I have this woman talk during a review, I'm going to give her a British accent so that there's no... Oh, I say, you've got to pray against the devil, because I'm not doing it. I'm not... I refuse to talk like this woman, because you won't have seen the movie, and you'll just be like, oh, Eli's a vicious, vicious racist, right. and you're wrong. I'm not. She talks like that. So I refuse. I will give her 
And I'm going to make her talk like Bernie Sanders. She'll have a Jewish accent first. I will not talk like this woman. I draw hard lines in the sand. It's good to know that you're a comedian of integrity, sir. That's right. So no I guess hosh point oh for me. <laughs> if you never hear from Heath and me again, keep in mind we have to watch this one in theaters opening night in South Georgia. Pretty sure we're going to be the only white atheists in the crowd. So I mean, we're we're pretty good at holding in a laugh. We've had to a number of times before, but we are humans. So. Yes, and I will be watching this at 11 a.m. in the morning at the AMC in the middle of Times Square. Oh. So if I'm not the only person in there with a homeless guy who's jerking off to the fact that the <laughs> picture's moved, I will be amazed. So with that to look forward to, we're going to bring episode two to a merciful close. Once again, huge thanks to Meg Griffiths for joining us tonight, and a resounding thanks to all the Patreon donors that help make the show go. If you'd like to count yourself among their ranks, you can make a per-episode donation at patreon.com slash godawful, and thereby earn early access to every episode. You can also help us a ton by leaving us a five-star review on iTunes and by sharing the show on all your various social media platforms. And if you enjoyed the show, be sure to check out our sibling shows, The Scathing Atheist and The Skeptocrat, available on iTunes, Stitcher, and wherever else podcasts live. If you have questions, comments, or cinematic suggestions, you can email godawfulmovies at gmail.com. All the music used in this episode was written and performed by Ryan Slotnick of Evil Jaffs on Mars and was used with permission. If you'd like what you hear, hear more by following the link on the show notes for this episode. Thank you again for giving us a chunk of your life this week. For Heath Enright and Eli Bosnick, I'm No Illusions promising to work hard for another chunk next week. Until then, we'll leave you with a guy from Brooklyn telling you to fuck yourself. Fuck you.